The Antonov 225 is the world's largest operational aircraft. When the pilot pushes the throttle, the entire airplane vibrates. The Antonov can transport exceptionally large loads, and it has set numerous records. Over the years, the Antonov and its crew have flown to all corners of the globe. Now, they're transporting components for three power plants from Chile to Bolivia, each weighing some 150 tons. Along the way, the aircraft will cross over the Andes Mountains, whose peaks top 6,500 meters. It's the biggest mission this aircraft and its crew have ever flown. But the cargo aircraft is several decades old, so there's always something in need of repair. As the best plane must have the best tools. Will the crew succeed in their mission? It's a dream for um, all pilots to be uh, in crew on this plane. The Gostomil Airport in Ukraine is located about a half hour from Kiev. It's not a place you'd expect to stumble across a sleeping giant. But the airport is home base for Antonov Airlines. And for the Antonov 225, nicknamed Emria, or Dream in Ukrainian. The world's largest aircraft even outclasses the Airbus 380 in size. The Antonov is one of a kind. Indeed, only one was ever built. And it's breathtaking. 84 meters from nose to tail, 88 meters from wingtip to wingtip, and with a height of 18 meters, it's as tall as a six-story building. The Antonov 225 is more than just a cargo plane. It's the biggest super heavy transporter to fly the skies. It features a carrying capacity of 250 tons, giving it a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons. To top it off, it's also the only aircraft in the world powered by six engines. You'd think an aircraft like this would be brimming with high tech, but the Antonov was designed decades ago during the Soviet era. The cockpit, too, sports something of a retro flair. The Antonov was developed with a specific purpose in mind. To carry the Soviet Union's Buran space shuttle from its landing site back to Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. On December 21st, 1988, the Antonov 225 took to the skies for the first time. During a test flight in 1989, the aircraft set 106 world records relating to weight, distance, and altitude. After the first flight, we were proud, of course, proud that our designers built an aircraft like that. The first flight was so smooth that afterwards, I joked with the chief designer, saying, if you keep building such good planes, you soon won't need any test pilots anymore. For the ailing Soviet Union, the Antonov 225 was also a source of national pride. After the Soviet Union collapsed, the Buran space program was canceled. The mega cargo transporter was mothballed. Although a second Antonov was under construction, work was halted and the project was abandoned.
In 2001, Antonov Airlines returned the AN-225 to the skies. Not as a space shuttle transporter, but as a commercial cargo freighter. It's called upon when extremely large and heavy loads need to be transported. The cargo compartment can handle oversized payloads with ease. The AN-225 was based on a smaller forerunner, the AN-124. This four-engine aircraft can transport loads of up to 150 tons. The AN-225 is called in for heavier cargo. The world's largest aircraft can handle an additional 100 tons. The AN-225 is being called into action again, far away from its home base in Ukraine. The Antonov Airlines crew have flown to South America. This job is the largest ever for the cargo plane. It's been tasked with transporting six Benson boilers from Chile to Bolivia. The boilers are massive. A single one tops 300 tons. That's why each boiler is delivered in two sections. The transport will require 12 round trip flights in all. On each trip, they also have to plan another day for loading and unloading. And they have just four weeks to complete the mission. This is where the boilers will be used, here in the middle of the Bolivian jungles. Three thermal power plants are being expanded to combined cycle units. It's an enormous undertaking that's intended to boost Bolivia's power generating capacity by 50%. The components are being sent from all around the world by freighter. By truck. and by cargo plane. Lefgen Golovnov is the Antonov Airline Project Manager assigned to this mission. A complex project like this takes months of preparation. The crew is a well-oiled machine. They're on a tight schedule. The flights travel between Iquique in northern Chile and Chimoré in the middle of the Bolivian rainforest. In between lie the Andes. The flight itself takes only about 90 minutes. Chimoré is a small, simple airport, so the cargo has to be loaded and unloaded with timely precision. No aircraft are permitted to take off or land after sundown. Any delays mean the Antonov will have to spend the night. Departure is at 5 in the morning to allow for as many daylight hours on the Bolivian side as possible. The day before takeoff, the enormous boiler is loaded onto the aircraft. The project crew spent weeks developing a special track system. Every time it's needed, the crew has to assemble and dismantle the heavy sections of track by hand. The enormous nose cone is opened for loading. It's six and a half meters in diameter. When the system is activated, it rises almost silently. But then, 
things get noisy. An enormous loading ramp is located behind the nose. First, the nose gear has to be retracted. The front of the aircraft kneels down, powered by a very loud motor. It all happens at the touch of a few buttons and levers, similar to the lift ramp of a truck. To stabilize the aircraft, the crew extend the support struts. It all runs like clockwork, but lowering the 175-ton aircraft requires intense concentration. Every step of the process is carefully monitored by the crew, especially loadmaster Sergei Onopchenko. Just a single moment of inattention could result in damage running into the millions of euros. The nose gear is now in a fully retracted position and is suspended slightly in the air. The Antonov 225 is now supported only by the struts. The loading ramp is unfurled, exposing the enormous mouth that will soon swallow the 150-ton payload. The crew is working with careful deliberation. More struts are needed so that the ramp will be able to support the weight of the cargo. The team put them into position, sometimes lying under the ramp as they work. Loadmaster Sergei Onopchenko keeps a sharp eye on things. Each added strut helps stabilize the ramp. It's precision work done under time pressure. The ramp is in place. Now, the team have to assemble the track system. The sections are heavy. It takes four crew members to lift a single section into position. Then, they're screwed together. A forklift brings more steel sections, holding them in place until the struts can be shifted into position. Screwing the elements together is precision work. If the unit isn't assembled perfectly, it could become unstable, and that could spell disaster. If any uh, job with uh, uh, heavy uh, equipment is uh, dangerous, uh, potentially, but uh, I hope everyone good trained and care of uh, itself and others. The heavy load will be placed on top of these orange skids. Cable winches will pull the load into the cargo hold. The mobile cranes are approaching. The crew directs them into position. Two mobile cranes will be needed to hoist the boiler onto the tracks. A single crane would never be able to master the 150-ton load. Counterweights are put into position so that the cranes don't tip over. Once everything is finally balanced and checked, the cranes are ready to go. The freight carrier is 40 years old, so there's always something in need of repair. The team from Antonov Airlines are specialists here too. They're usually able to handle small and even moderate-sized repairs on their own. 
But for that, they need the proper tools. Project manager Levgen Golovnov went to a store about 30 kilometers away and brought a new toolkit back with him, much to the surprise of his team. Technical people, they like tools and uh, they enjoy them. The best plane must have the best tools. Today, there's a problem with the door. Normally, it's pulled shut with an electric wire cable. But the wire cable has snapped and the mounting at the door broke. There's a replacement for the broken cable, but the mounting has to be improvised. Teamwork is of the essence. Project manager Levgen Golovnov also pitches in. Two hours later, the door is repaired. The electric wire cable is working again, in time for takeoff. Yes. Finally, we fix the door, and I hope it is a good job. The driver now sets the low loader into motion. There's not enough room to maneuver in front of the aircraft, so the truck circles the Antonov in a big loop to make its approach. The low loader stops right between the two cranes. The crew shackled the crane ropes to the transport container. The cranes begin to hoist the container. It's tricky work. The crane operators need to make sure that the container stays perfectly level. If the load becomes unbalanced, they could lose control. Once the freight container is safely hoisted, the low loader drives off. This is precision work. The container ends up perfectly positioned above the tracks. The 150-ton cargo container is gently lowered into position. Concentration is of the essence. They're on a tight deadline. We would like just uh, to have uh, to, complete, to complete this uh, operation uh, as early as possible because tomorrow uh, our departure very early in time and uh, to have uh, normal good rest. The freight container is secured onto the track system with chains and steel cables. The two cranes won't release their grip on the container until it's secured. The crew remove the heavy mounting brackets that the crane ropes were attached to. Otherwise, the container would be too tall to pass through the Antonov's freight hatch. The container is attached to steel ropes, which are connected to two cable winches. Centimeter by centimeter, they pull the freight into the aircraft. The ropes have to wind evenly. Two crew members balance on boards to make sure the ropes are evenly distributed on the spool.
Other crew members gently lift the steel ropes to make sure they don't catch onto the track. They're almost done. If this goes smoothly, they'll be able to leave on schedule in the morning. While the huge container slowly vanishes into the cargo hold, the team outside starts to dismantle the track. The boss also pitches in, even though he says his job is actually to do nothing. Nothing is nothing special. Uh, I try to help uh, our guys and uh, I try to uh, supply them all necessary and to reduce their activities. So <laughs> nothing means a lot. <laughs> Levgen Golovnov isn't a pilot, but he knows the AN-225 like the back of his hand. The Antonov has a flight crew of six, the pilot and co-pilot, two flight engineers, a navigator, and a communications specialist. The Soviet-era technology may be decades old, but it's still reliable. It's constantly being upgraded to meet the latest standards, but much of it is still analog. We would like to have uh, under control as much as possible because the plane is unique and uh, much uh, more important to control everything on board when you can and uh, not uh, uh, put uh, responsibilities of computers. Behind the cockpit, there's a lounge area for the flight crew. Even in the lounge, regulations call for seat belts but there are also ropes along the ceiling. Just in the case, if you need uh, immediate access to the technical department, you have to use it. The heart of the Antonov is inside the wings. The technology isn't hidden behind steel panels. It needs to be accessible to the flight engineers. As now we'll try to get inside wing Levgen Golovnov opens a hatch and enters the wing. The operating mechanisms in the wings are controlled from the cockpit and activated mechanically via wire cable winches. Any parts that wear out are regularly replaced. But the load-bearing parts of the fuselage are still original, dating back to 1988. Levgen Golovnov opens another hatch to access the roof. Traces of the aircraft's history are visible here. During transport, the Buran space shuttle was attached to these two protrusions. Two strong ones here, and a lot you can see on the, the middle and uh, tail side. The stabilizer design is also unusual. Unlike most aircraft, there's no single vertical stabilizer. Carrying a heavy external load changes the airflow. The designers opted for a swept back horizontal stabilizer. The AN-225 is also the only aircraft in the world equipped with six turbofan engines. Each one has a rated thrust of some 230 kilonewtons. The wings have to withstand enormous forces. They boast a total surface area of some 900 square meters, the size of two basketball courts. Down in the hold, the container holding the boiler is safely on board. The crew secure it with heavy chains. If the 150 ton container were to shift or slide during flight, that could spell disaster. The track system has been returned to the aircraft. It will make the trip to Bolivia so that the cargo can be unloaded. Last but not least, the Antonov is fueled. 
two airport crew approach in a service vehicle. First, the grounding cable is attached. The kerosene is stored in underground tanks. The opening is marked with a flag. The tanker vehicle then pumps fuel into the aircraft. The Antonov has a total fuel capacity of 330 tons. But only 30 will be needed for the flight from Chile to Bolivia. Pumping the fuel takes just 15 minutes. The loading ramp is retracted, and one of the onboard mechanics closes the enormous nose cone. The Antonov is loaded. Time for the crew to get some rest. They have an early start the next morning. At 4 a.m., the Antonov crew are back at the airport. Final preparations are underway. In the cockpit, the flight engineers rouse the aircraft from slumber. Outside on the tarmac, a tow truck is moving into position. It will push the aircraft out of its parking spot to the runway. A tow bar is attached to the two nose gear units. It takes a bit of jogging back and forth before it's in position. Then the bar is secured with bolts. The Antonov team brought the tow truck with them from Kiev. The ones here at the local airport aren't powerful enough to handle the world's largest aircraft. In the cargo hold, project manager Levkin Golovnov attaches a sensor to the container. for the cargo during the flight, uh, takeoff, and landing. The container looks robust, but the boiler inside is equipped with complex technology. That's why the forces exerted on it will be documented on this laptop. The pilots are here. By coincidence, Chief Pilot Dimitro Antonov shares the name with the aircraft he captains. Only six Antonov airline pilots are licensed for this aircraft. Two pilots are always on board so that they can take turns. Before every flight, the pilots conduct a visual inspection of the most important components. They use a flashlight to examine the engines, wings, landing gear, undercarriage, and tail assembly. On an aircraft of this size, it takes a bit longer. Once around the Antonov is a loop of about 250 meters. Everything looks in top shape. A mechanic does a final check to make sure the 150-ton cargo is securely fastened. Project manager Levgen Golovnov inspects the freight documents. They're also in order. The takeoff routine is underway in the cockpit. 
Co-pilot Viktor Goncharov will be at the helm on the flight to Bolivia. Out on the tarmac, the crew remove the wheel chocks and pull the protective covering off the sensors. Then the 448 horsepower tow truck will haul the behemoth out of its parking spot. According to airport regulations, the engines can only be powered up once the aircraft is on the runway. The tow truck moves the AN-225 into position. The crew accompanies the aircraft the entire way, making sure there's nothing on the tarmac that could damage the tires. From their perch in the cockpit, the pilots wouldn't be able to see debris on the tarmac, especially in the dark. the Antonov slowly vanishes into the darkness. The pilots start up the six engines. Each one supplies 230 kilonewtons of thrust. It takes four minutes for the engines to fire up. Now the pilots open the throttle. The Antonov 225 and its valuable 150 tons of cargo lifts off, headed for Bolivia. It's daybreak in Bolivia. The Chimore Airport is in the middle of the jungle. Normally, it's only small aircraft that land here. Airport staff are preparing for a special event, the arrival of the world's largest aircraft. Everything is ready. The crane to unload the aircraft is in position. The airport firefighting unit is also in place, just in case. The giant aircraft makes its approach. Co-pilot Viktor Goncharov maneuvers the Antonov safely above the treetops. In the warm, humid air, the Antonov leaves behind thick condensation trails. The landing strip at this remote airport is just 4,000 meters long, just long enough to accommodate the Antonov. At the end of the strip, Viktor Goncharov makes a turn and rolls to the parking area. The Antonov 225 has arrived in the middle of the Bolivian jungle. Speed is now of the essence. First, the crew secure the aircraft with the heavy wheel chocks. The Antonov is scheduled to lift off again in less than eight hours from now, if everything goes smoothly. It will get dark here by late afternoon and no aircraft are permitted to start or land at this airport outside of daylight hours. A mechanic walks around the Antonov, visually inspecting for any damage. 
The cockpit crew disembark. Captain Dimitro Antonov and his team have a few hours off, which they'll spend at a nearby hotel. A crew member opens the nose flap and the Antonov moves into a kneeling position. The ramp is extended. A forklift unloads the first sections of the track system. The crew are working on a tight schedule. Project manager Lefgen Golovnov wants to speed things up. He gets behind the wheel of the forklift. Meanwhile, in the cargo bay, other crew members are removing the heavy chains from the transport container. They are an experienced crew. Everyone is working at full throttle and full concentration. They know they can't afford any mistakes during unloading. After one and a half hours, the track system is ready to go. We are on time. The average time we have for building RAM system after landing is two hours. But currently, uh, we have good uh, team and uh, pass one and a half hour and RAM system is uh, almost ready. Two mobile cranes are brought into position. A low loader approaches. Later, it will transport the freight container to the construction site. But now it's loaded with the counterweights for the mobile cranes. The crew give the green light for unloading. A centimeter at a time, the 150-ton container glides down the tracks. In the meantime, the cranes carefully extend their booms toward the aircraft. The container is now at the end of the tracks. The crane ropes are attached to the freight container. Soon, 150 tons will be suspended on two hooks. It's a tricky maneuver. Lefgen Golovnov doesn't want to take any chances. He gives some final instructions to the crane operator. One small mistake could spell serious damage to the aircraft and the freight. As project manager, he's responsible for safe loading and unloading. The container is suspended in midair. Now, Lefgen Golovnov's part of the mission is done. The client will now assume responsibility for the shipment. Like any parcel delivery firm, Antonov Airlines gets a signature verifying the handover. The client is pleased. 
the Antonov crew has delivered the freight safe and sound. In the meantime, the crane hauls the freight onto the low loader. The container is now safely on the trailer. The crew still have to hurry. They start dismantling the track system and returning it to the hold. The sun will go down in just a few hours. Nighttime flights from the airport in the middle of the Bolivian jungle are banned. Project manager Levgen Golovnov again pitches in behind the wheel of the forklift. For local people, the colossal Antonov 225 is a sensation. Entire families flock to the airport to catch a glimpse. Even a dog makes the trip. Though they're on a tight schedule, the crew always take the time to pose for a few pictures. Everything's safely stowed back on board. The ramp is retracted and the nose cone is closed. Everything seems well on schedule. But Levgen Golovnov is worried. The AN-225 is ready for takeoff, but the cockpit crew and chief pilot, Dimitro Antonov, aren't here yet, and they can't be reached. Cell coverage is spotty in the jungle. Finally, they arrive. The hotel shuttle was delayed. In the meantime, a Bolivian drug squad with a sniffer dog have been searching the aircraft. Everything is checked, even the cockpit crew's baggage. Narcotic smuggling is a major problem in South America. Not even the world's biggest aircraft is exempt from inspection. Everything is in order. The pilots and the flight engineers are free to board. Time for final flight preparations in the cockpit. All systems are fired up and readied for takeoff. Levgen Golovnov is the last to board. The mechanics take their seats at the rear of the aircraft. The Antonov leaves its parking spot and heads to the runway. The six engines kick up a huge amount of dust. On the way, Captain Dimitro Antonov lets the engines warm up. Their powerful rumble vibrates the entire aircraft. There's no taxiway at this airport. The Antonov will have to turn on the runway. The AN-225 is cleared for takeoff. Captain Dimitro Antonov pushes the throttle for all six engines. The giant aircraft takes off, heading back to Chile. The crew in the back takes advantage of the short flight to rest. They've been working since three in the morning.
By now, the Antonov is crossing above the 6,500 meter high peaks of the Andes. The mountain range extends along the border between Bolivia and Chile. Less than 90 minutes after takeoff, Captain Dimitro Antonov approaches the airport at Iquique. On one side of the small airport lies the Pacific Ocean, on the other, the Atacama Desert. It's a routine landing, but since some of the Soviet-era technology is decades old, it always takes a bit of muscle power. The giant aircraft is back where it started that morning. Project manager Lefgen Golovnov goes to the cargo hold armed with spray cans. The spray is intended to kill any jungle stowaways, such as bugs and spiders. What is it? The local room? We need to kill all insections in the cargo hold. Now, Levgen Golovnov may open the door. Once again, the crew has fulfilled its mission. It's long time to prepare for this flight, but now it's, we are working, we have the job, it's everybody happy. There will be more flights between Chile and Bolivia. The crew will make 12 round trips in all. The Antonov 225 is a masterpiece of engineering. It's the world's largest aircraft, and it's one of a kind. It can haul up to 225 tons of freight, more than any other aircraft. Loads this large are fairly uncommon, so the giant transporter doesn't fly all that many missions. But the crew of Antonov Airlines is always filled with fresh pride whenever the Emria, the dream, takes to the skies.